Welcome back to Smoking and Grilling and Cooking with me, A.B. Now you guys read the title, you know what I'm making? I'm making a shepherd's pie. Now listen, I gotta tell you guys this right off the bat. If you look in my description box below this video, I'm gonna give you the traditional, you know, style, you know, ingredients and uh, seasoning, you know, to make it just more like, you know, a traditional type of a uh, shepherd's pie. But I'm gonna let you guys know right now, when you watch this video, I got a secret weapon. And if you guys been watching me for a while, you know I'm hooked on that Creole kick. Listen, this is what's gonna take it over the edge. You wanna talk about just something good, the meat has that flavor, all of the vegetables absorb it, this is it. And I should have been saying this a long time ago, like in, from the very, very beginning, I'm gonna give you guys a secret to having great tasting food. That is, you gotta taste your food as you go. So listen, when you cook something, I don't care what stage it's in, once it's cooked, go ahead and taste it. That way, right there is the way you guys are gonna find out. That's the difference between making bland food and making great tasting food right off the bat. So, with this being said, I'm gonna get right into this video because I'm eager to show you guys just how easy it is to make. You know what, so we can put this in the rotation for our weekly meals. Okay, now let's go over the ingredients. Okay, you see we got Parmesan, that's one cup of you know shredded Parmesan. We got ground beef, which is two pounds. And then listen, for all you guys that are new watching my channel, you know what, as you notice that I pick up an ingredient, you'll see the name of the ingredient show up on the screen along with the quantity. And also, if you look down in the, the uh, description box below the video, you'll have an ingredient list down there. That way you can copy, paste, and then print. All right, coming back to the uh, ingredients you know, on the screen. Then we got an onion right here, that's medium. Hey, listen, I'm in Texas, you guys, so medium out here is large. Then we got uh, potatoes. Look, you just only gonna need uh, three pounds, that's it. So don't forget you gotta scrub them, clean them, let them dry, and then go ahead and peel them. Now that's your Philadelphia cream cheese. It's up to you how much you wanna put in there. Then you got your sour cream, it says one cup. Okay, now, if you look right there, look, we got chicken stock. And here's a little pro tip for everybody. Usually whenever you got a recipe and it calls for some type of uh, like liquid, most of the time you'll have a recipe that'll call for water. If you wanna level that dish up, you always got that chicken stock. Hey, that's just a little pro tip for everybody. All right, coming back again to the ingredient list. Okay, we got butter. Then we got one, you know, one quarter cup. Then we got that Creole kick. This right here is the level up. I said two tablespoons, but in reality, listen, I like to add about four tablespoons. It really like livens it up. Now this right here is your frozen veggies. Look, you got one cup of the uh, green peas, you got your corn, and then you got your carrots. All right, now, after you peeled, you know, and uh, you peeled your potatoes, now it's time to like cut them. You just want everything to be even. But listen, once we boil them, you just want them, if they're all the same size, they'll all be done the same size. Hey, the key is when you're making mashed potatoes is you don't want it to be mushy, you know? So you want it to have some type of texture. At least I do. It's up to you. You can make it however you want to make it. All right, so what I'm doing is, look, I cut them all about the same, then I went ahead and just halved them. So I'm getting four out of that, and then on the ends, I ended up just coming up with like two. You want to do that for both of your tomatoes, I mean, your, uh, both of your potatoes. Now, if you got uh, smaller potatoes, just whatever, as long as you got three pounds, you know what I mean? You can do this with anywhere between two and three pounds. Now it's time to go ahead and get your, your beef. Let's go ahead and just start getting that together. Look, I added that uh, extra virgin uh, olive oil to it. You know, just to uh, help it out, just so nothing like sort of like sticks on the bottom. It's gonna help it in the long run. Once you got that about 90% cooked, then go ahead and go ahead and add your. Uh, you want to add your onions. Then you just want to move it around. Listen, you want to cook it down. You want it to like soften up, and you just want it to like. You want your meat to absorb that. You know that flavor of that onion. Now listen, that's optional too. Cause some people don't like onions, but if you make it this way, I'm telling you, you don't really have that whole taste. You know, that onion taste to it, it's just like super good. Then, what you just saw me add right now is just the, uh, I just went ahead and added the tomato paste. Now, it's really no order like this. I like to let the heat, you know, dissolve it, and then we go from there. But you can add your chicken stock to it and get it to melt however you want to do it. You can do this part wherever you want to, but if you follow this direction right here, I promise you, won't nothing go wrong. Then you just saw me add that Creole kick. And now, listen, I tasted that just to see where we was at, and then I needed to add just a little bit of salt. And again, listen, that's the key to cooking. You gotta taste it in stages. Now, we are gonna go ahead and add our minced garlic. Usually when you see me add garlic, that tells you right off the bat that we only got about one to two minutes left of cooking, you know, on this heat, because you know, garlic will burn. So after you get that going, it starts becoming translucent. Now it's time to go ahead and add your frozen, the frozen veggies. So again, that was one cup of each. That was carrot, corns, and peas. Now, just work it back and forth. 
look, they were frozen, but the heat from that, and then we gonna add that chicken stock to it also. All of that just gonna cook it down. It's already pre-cooked, it's just frozen. It's gonna get it just right. The texture on this is gonna be out of sight. Now, you can see those are like sort of stuck together, but mix them up. Got it, you know, my mixture the way I like it. And now it's time to go ahead and just add that, uh, that chicken stock. This right here, listen, when you cook this, when I put that lid on it and I let it simmer, man, you wanna talk about good. And the aroma in the home is just incredible. All right, so now you guys can just see, especially for our new people that are learning how to cook, you know what I mean? Uh, it's nothing like having a visual guy. It's like having a, a, a chef in your kitchen. All right, so once I got it the way I like it, everything is covered good, mixed good. And you can see right there in the middle, you can see some bubbles coming up. That's where the, uh, from the heat. Don't forget, I'm cooking on a cooktop, so the heating element is in the center. But you can see it right there by that arrow that everything is uh, simmering just nice. What I do is I cook it down for about five minutes, put the lid on it, and then when I'm done, okay, this is the part you don't see. I transferred this to the actual stove. Now that I was done with after boiling my potatoes, you know what, this is a way for you new people to learn how to check your potatoes. I just stick a knife in it, it should be no resistance. Shouldn't run in it, it's just like super easy, but whatever it does, for one, it should do that for all. And once you got that uh, your texture right, go ahead and add your butter. Once you got your butter, get your potato masher and just go ahead and start mashing. Hey, here's another pro tip, you guys. If you guys got like a ladle scoop, hey, that's the best, hey, to me, that's the best way to uh, mash mashed potatoes. But I went ahead and used this uh, masher anyway. So I tasted it just to see where we was at. Obviously, it was gonna need a little salt. So, and then, you know, I come back with that pepper. Again, you guys, don't forget that. That's very, 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 very important. Taste and stages. Now, remember those eggs we had? Look, you gotta use the egg yolk. You get rid of the whites. You can save the whites for something else. Maybe make a dessert like lemon meringue or something like that. But you just wanna use the four yolks. Then you come with your sour cream. And then, you know what? Then we are gonna just mix this all up. And then, you know, once we got it completely mixed, you know, and I know what you guys are probably gonna say right now, looking at this, you're like, man, that's not a whole lot. But we are making this only in the 12 inch uh, cast iron skillet, that's plenty. Now, remember I talked about tasting it? Here we go, let's taste it, boom. Needs a little bit of salt, a little bit more salt. So just go ahead and hit it. You know, uh, hey, this is the key, you guys. Taste as you go. Now, look at that right here. Hey, after I just keep folding that over, and after I'm done mixing that all together, you know, after we added that salt, then it was time to come with that Parmesan. Now this right here, hey, this the, this the game changer right here, folks. Now, hey, listen, you can do garlic, herb, whatever type you like, you know, sky's the limit here. You know, be creative, you guys. Now, after, you know, everything was done cooking, after your meat and your mixture is done, now it's time, hey, this the easy part right here. Go ahead and put your potatoes, you know, we just gonna like cover it as if we were icing it, uh, cake and listen when you get done you can do some kind of design on the top earlier i mentioned like a lemon meringue or something like that you know you put those whips on the top you can do that because that look helps it make it look better once it has a uh, once you put it in the oven you know it gives it that little brown texture to it so anything that's not even all the highest points and the whips those are going to give you that brown you know look to it now it's time to put it in the oven at 425 degrees and then we're gonna cook it for about 20 to 25 minutes and we're gonna just watch it. There you go, folks. That's it. Look, I hit it with a little garnish, put a little, uh, you know, parsley on top and some chai. Hey, listen, I'm gonna do a video very, very soon about what you need to have. And listen, I promise you, chives are gonna be one of them. Gotta have chives, chives and green onions, but chives first. All right, now go ahead and just make your, put them on a plate. And there you have it, you guys. Listen, that's shepherd's pie at its greatest right there. I want to tell you this, what sent it over the top was, it was just that, uh, it was that Creole kit. Now, don't forget, down in the description box below, you will see an ingredient list. I'll give it to you, you know, like the regular way so you guys can enjoy it, you know, traditional style. So tell me what you guys think about this one here. Super easy to make, and a lot of people don't even make it at home. They usually go out to like a diner or a restaurant and, you know, like get this. Hey, so I want you guys to let me know down in the comment section below how many of you guys out there have even ever made shepherd's pie. Now, if you're new to my channel, let me just take this time to say, hey, welcome to my channel. You know what? Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, and tell everybody out there there's a channel out here just taking the mystery out of cooking and simplifying these recipes. And with that being said, for all y'all that's been watching these videos, you know how I'm going to end it. I'm out of here.